The traditional jig and pig, complete with an Uncle Josh pork trailer, is a classic cold water smallmouth bait. This effective crayfish imitator is far too snaggy on a rocky river bottom. The solution, the Confidence Baits Finesse Jig and Craw, built upon the frame of the snag resistant dragon head. The craw is made with floating soft plastic, so the defensive posture of a cornered crayfish is exaggerated. A sparse skirt with combination silicone and round rubber fills in the body with lifelike crustacean leg movements. Here's some insight on how to best present this effective big fish lure. First thing you need to know is that not all crayfish go dormant in winter. They just slow down, way down. Caught a uh, crayfish here in the shallows in this 36, 37 degree water to illustrate <clears throat> exactly how slow you need your presentations to be. He's right here. We'll zoom in on him. <clears throat> and understand that he's not, he's not dead. This is a live one. He's just moving that slow today. An old winter fishing adage goes, fish as slow as you can. When you think you're fishing slow enough, slow down a little more. This footage drives that point home well. Instead of dragging a jig and craw, trust that its subtle built-in action of floating soft plastic and round rubber are all that you need to convince a big smallmouth to bite. Too much action convinces them not to bite. looking smallmouth. Look at those spots on them. Put him back, see if we can get another. It was a real crisp, not a hard hit, but a crisp one. It's important in uh, knowing what it feels like. A lot of people ask, you know, what it feel like when they hit. Well, part of the trick is is not moving it around much. It's more you move it around more you feel that it banging and, and there's a constant vibrational noise of it banging over rocks and tumbling. If you quiet that noise by letting it sit, when you do feel something, you'll know, hey, that's a fish. If you're someone who can't let a bait sit for very long, uh, one thing that you want to might want to try is get your hand off the reel. Tuck it in your life vest and let it sit. One of the first things I do when I pull up on a spot like this, a nice big eddy, is to, to do fan cast. Hit the bottom, middle, and top, and pretty quickly try to figure out just by what it feels like when it's it's uh, dragging back to me, you know, dragging the jig or tube or whatever you're fishing back to you. Feel the bottom and figure out where that real soft leaf bottom is or, or muck bottom where that harder bottom is and uh, avoid that leaf pile and stick with the hard bottom. Oh, he thumped it nice too. Thump that little, hi though. <clears throat> Thump that little jig. Alright. It's probably upper 30s. I don't I didn't bring a thermometer with me, but <clears throat> that uh finesse jig had sat there for I don't know. 25, 30 seconds. But understand that it's not really just sitting still when a fish like this picks it up. It's sitting on the bottom and that that floating plastic of the, the crayfish claws is sitting there doing this. Just kind of waving its arm saying, how you doing? All right, let's go get another one. That didn't take long. To come back for number two. That was the next cast. Takes less than a minute to retie. With the memory of a lost big fish because you didn't retie. That lasts a little bit longer. It also gives you a chance to reapply your scent. 
that helps with jig and pig, if it doesn't have a rattle, is to just kind of shake it. I do the same thing with the jerk bait sometimes, you just shiver it. But what that does with that, that lead head of the jig and pig is it taps against that rock, makes a sound, draws them in, just, you know, the clicking of a crayfish moving around, banging on stuff, the shell knocking into things, or I don't know. Maybe it has nothing to do with noises that crayfish make, but it works. It, you know, just taking that, that lead head and going tick, 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 just shaking it. You don't move it, you don't hop it, you just kind of bounce it, bounce it, bounce it without it moving towards you. All right, there he is. wide one. I am really missing my net right about now. Oh, yeah. That's probably our our big for the day. Yep, I would say so. If I can actually grab them. This is almost embarrassing how much I can't lift fish because I was so used to netting. All right, get in there. Oh, yeah. That's a good hook that holds a fish like that. Very nice hook. Go to finesse jig and craw. Finesse jig and craw. Blueberry, 19 and a quarter, four pounds on the nose. Oh yeah. Good one, Matt. Oh, that man might be a 19 or 20. Yeah, that's a good fish. You dandy. He'll go 19 plus. Big for the day. Damn, that thing's huge. <laughs> Look at that. He's yeah. a 20, I bet. Yeah. Look at that. It, it was 19 plus. When I saw him come up, I was like, that's gotta be 19 I'll plus. I'll shake the skunk off right there. What did he <laughs> what did he hit? The crawl. Oh the the black one? Yep. The finesse. Finesse jig and crawl. Yep. Sweet. So, tell us what you were doing. I was just hit. letting the Bait just sit on the inside of this current seam right up here. Right where the foam is? He, yep, right, right on the inside of that brush pile. And he just took it and started to run. Nice. Let's get her back in. 